We're joined now by Randall O'Toole, who studied transportation for 20 years. He's the author of Gridlock, Why We're Stuck in Traffic and What to Do About It. And Randall, you're saying that if we privatize more, we'll be less stuck in traffic? Well, absolutely. Uh, you, when you fly an airplane, the airlines know that certain days of the week, certain times of the year, there are more people who want to go, so they charge more during those times, and they charge less during other times, so they can fill up their planes all the time. Well, that brings up something that Highway 91 did. They, they have congestion pricing. The toll changes based on whether it's rush hour or not. That's right, and, and private entities will have more of an incentive to do this than, than public agencies. And so uh, we'll get less congestion. Why do well, they have more of an incentive? Well, because they know their money is coming from the users. They know that they need to provide a quality product to the users. In Highway 91, if it gets congested, they are committed to giving people refunds. So uh, they're charging to get you through without having to deal with congestion. They're charging to save you time. So it's cheap in the off hours, but it's as much as nine bucks at peak time and some people would say that's ripping off the driver yes well you don't have to use that road but some people in uh, southern california know that if they have to pick their kids up at daycare it costs them five dollars per child per minute if they're late picking them up so paying nine dollars for a toll is ch much cheaper than being a couple of minutes late at the daycare center all right let's move on to air travel there's this idea that there was once before deregulation this golden age of air travel where the flight attendants were beautiful and they took care of you and everything was elegant and comfortable it's not true well, I don't know if it was true because I couldn't afford to fly in those days the golden age of air travel meant those who had the gold could afford to fly since deregulation the cost of flying adjusted for inflation has fallen by fifty percent that huge decline in airfares has led to a dramatic increase in flying we, the average American flies three times as many miles as they did uh, 40 years ago, and we fly far more than anybody else in the world uh, as well, we travel it may by. Be crowded, but it may seem crowded. It may seem uncomfortable, but frankly, flying in DC threes and other prop planes that they had in the 1950s were pretty noisy and uncomfortable anyway. <laughs> well, please stick around, Randall, because. Don't you love trains? I do. They're so romantic. And I hear rail is the way of the future. Already other countries are way ahead of America. In Japan, they have the maglev train. The magnetic force is all that's needed to propel it down this test track at jaw-dropping speeds. That was 500 kilometers an hour. About as fast that's the equivalent of about 300 miles per hour. This is a Chinese train that goes about that fast. If it were in America, it could go from New York to Chicago in just over three hours. No wonder politicians are so excited about spending your money. Building high-speed rail lines that will improve travel and commerce. It's rail, 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 and rail. Here's a simulation of what's planned for California. You will pay for this. We have allocated $8 billion for high-speed rail. We've allocated another $5 billion from $1 billion for the next five years. We're making a commitment that is absolutely unprecedented. It is the single best investment of any traveling dollar you can invest in. The single best investment. And Art Gazzetti totally agrees with that. He's the vice president. He's a vice president at the American Public Transportation Association. So you represent America's government-run government subsidized mass transit systems and you say we should do more of them. well one point on that john it's uh, all the public authorities and public transportation but there's a lot of private sector involvement there too we can talk about that more but as far as high speed rail uh, it's a part of the system all the parts of that system are important the roads the airports certainly the public transit systems what high speed rail stands out it's the unfinished part of the system and a part of the system that's critical in a forward looking way but it's unfinished because it's so costly. It doesn't pay for itself. Uh, it doesn't pay for itself uh, in the sense that it needs to be invested in. It needs to be built. Uh, certainly around the world, there are a lot of success stories, Asia, Europe, 
uh, where high-speed rail is uh, embraced by those countries. There's nothing about them that make it successful that it couldn't be successful here. In fact, it will well, be. What, We're just getting started. What makes it happen there, what you call success, yes. is big government investment. Yes. It, it, it is all infrastructure. Infrastructure is a government investment. Uh, it supports the economy. It makes the economy work. Uh, we can't but put it how off. how much investment? I mean, the no. roads are infrastructure. Yes. Well, we need roads as, as part of it, and we need trains as part of it, too. It's a balanced system. But trains will make roads, no make airports balance work better. balance in that the roads get a penny per passenger mile, and planes get a penny per passenger mile, and trains get 60 cents from taxpayer per passenger Well, those, those uh, statistics certainly can all be debated. There's certainly, with the high-speed rail initiative that's been put forward, or is in corridors where the market is ripe. The subsidies are so enormous. I, I have this money here. My understanding is on, on rail. For every dollar the passenger pays, government pays three. So this just seems like a bad deal for um, us tax Well, it, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's not a bad deal, John. In fact, it's critical for the country to do it. We're, Why isn't we're, this a bad deal? We're, well, Three we're to one. We're filming this in, in New York City. New York City, the economy wouldn't happen without the rail that supports it. Any infrastructure, whether it be road, air, or rail, is going to require some kind of investment. Now, on high-speed rail... Uh, but, once you know, there's investment and there's just... Uh, tearing uh, taxpayer money up. Now, what, what, what are the international models we're looking at? The international models are, models are there was an initial, initial investment from government to get it started, that initial capital. But after that, uh, the systems can uh, come either sustain themselves or come close to sustaining but themselves. But they don't sustain themselves. Oh, they, they, well, Not in America. In America, I see a lot of empty commuter trains, and we have footage from Portland, Oregon, and Baltimore. This is the Baltimore light rail system. Promoters said it would be an all new way of commuting for business and pleasure. But the same length of highway near Baltimore moves 10 times as many people. And here's a passenger on Portland celebrated light rail train. I, I don't want to pay all this tax money for coyotes. Well, <laughs> John, I'm, I'm laughing as I, as I uh, see that because I rode uh, a train today in Washington, D.C., and I stood from the beginning to the end, so I could provide you some clips that, that show otherwise. That's just Washington, Boston, New York, and if it would pay for no. itself, private No, the, 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 the fact is, if you want to look at statistics, uh, the trend are that more people are riding public transportation. Public transportation uh, is, 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 is been going up for the last 15 years around the country, not just in those big cities. Right. Handle? Public transportation carries about 50 billion passenger miles. Americans drive four and a half trillion passenger miles a year. It's, public transportation is one percent of, of the total. Mm -hmm. So it may be going up, but twice nothing is still nothing. Yeah, but we, we have to look at what's the balance for the future. Uh, what's, what's worked for us in the past isn't going to work uh, in full for the future as America grows. Population's growing. The urban areas are growing. Uh, we need a balanced system that has all well, of this parts. is what we're paying for in the future for our balance system florida tampa orlando high-speed rail florida looked at it and concluded the environmental costs of building it were greater than the benefits they dumped it decided against it then the obama administration said hey taxpayers will fund half of it so now they're going to build it well, no, there, you know, there are studies certainly that support the uh, uh, the environmental uh, importance of public tra of uh, high speed rail investments, public transit investments. We have to look at the land and our urban uh, use uh, the efficiently, the connectivity and how it connects with the system to make it all work better. The land development impacts from the system you build. How is communities created? Uh, and Randall, also, I, I assume you've looked at that. Uh, the environmental costs of, of rail are just about the same as of, of uh, driving or flying. Mm -hmm. Flying's a little bit higher, but guess what? Driving and flying are getting more fuel efficient all the time. Rail transit is getting less fuel efficient because we keep building trains into suburbs where people have three cars in every garage and they run empty. Sounds like a subsidy for rich people. Well, you know, the... Uh it's part of the system. Again, you know, there's, uh, there's uh, people from all walks of life on that system. All right. Well, thank you, Art and Randall. Uh, coming up. Now, your turn.
We're back with transportation specialist Randall O'Toole and Art Gazzetti of the American Public Transportation Association. So let's start with a question from my Facebook page for Randall O'Toole from Finn Lynch. How can I hold builders of roads accountable if they're private companies? It's not like I can choose to stop going to work in the morning. Well, if you go to a grocery store and the lines are too long, you're going to stop going to that grocery store. You're going to go to a grocery store that has short lines. Uh, right now, uh, a lot of cities have decided they want to make highways as congested as possible to discourage you from driving. If we have private roads, the private owners are going to want to make money from you, and so they're going to want to provide you with the least amount of congestion. So just the fact that they can make money from you will hold them accountable. Question for Art from Nick Nero. How can we replicate the amazing success of Amtrak for more parts of the country? <laughs> uh, well, the Amtrak system works well in places where it has been invested in. I spoke about my trip from Washington that was uh, a comfortable ride and got me here without a hitch today. There are other places it doesn't work, so the key is... Yeah, I have to work. ask, Nick, what, this amazing success? Are you... <laughs> For real here? Well, I mean, it only, it loses money well, everywhere well, except the Northeast. Yes, but the, the, the point is it will be used and it will be successful in places where it's a good service. Yes, sir. If Amtrak's investments are guaranteed by the government, won't they not care about safety because all, if they lose or if, if something crashes, they'll just uh, be reimbursed by the government like moral hazard and stuff like that? No, yeah, they're, they're certainly a, a public organization with uh, responsible people running it, and they care very much about safety. In fact, I'd say them and the transit systems around the country, that's job one. Ex except the National Transportation Safety Board uh, issued a ruling just yesterday that uh, the reason why nine people were killed in a, an accident in the Washington Metro Rail System is because there's a culture uh, of ignoring safety problems. and and uh, uh, allowing safety problems to build up in that metro rail system. They don't have the financial wherewithal to keep the system maintained, so they just let it decline. Yes, sir. Uh, my question is for uh, Mr. Gazzetti. Uh, I live in California, one of these proposed sites for, the, for a high-speed rail link, mm -hmm. and I'm curious what my incentive to take it is uh, when I can fly for probably, I would assume, less money for a shorter, distance, or for a shorter time. Mm -hmm. I'm just comparing it to the Acela, which is very expensive and, I, and, and kind of not that great. No, okay. It's uh, Acela and uh, the plans for the California project are going to be priced to market. So uh, it's what the market will, will bring. Uh, yeah, some people, sometimes the train trip, even if it's maybe a little slower, it might be the better trip door to door. It gets you center city to center city. There's certainly a lot more space to operate in, and it's a comfortable ride. If you give people all those amenities, uh, they'll choose to do it on their own. Nobody lives in the center city in Los Angeles. <clears throat> well, yeah, there will there'll be other, uh, other stops, too, but a lot of times that's where your business might take you. Nas but, uh, nationally, that's correct. Less than 8% of Americans work in center cities. Less than 1% live in center cities. They tend to be the wealthiest Americans. And so what we're doing is we're going to build a really expensive, heavily tax subsidized system for the wealthy to ride. Yeah, but you have a system that connects, so there's the connectivity to get you everywhere. But when you talk about connectivity, I yes. think about the bus, mm -hmm. which is much cheaper than Amtrak much cheaper than almost all the yeah. trains. And if people move, the bus can go there. The train right. is going this way forever. Well, the bus is a, is a critical part of the system. The, the, the bus will make the high-speed rail work better and, and vice versa, so well, you need that. You're just cheating the bus systems by yeah. subsidizing the trains. Uh, that, that, that's an important part, too. The, there's, there's a sweet spot for all of these different, uh, different modes. Sweet spot. Okay. <laughs> we won't solve this tonight. Thank you, Randall O'Toole and our Gazette.